Okay, so we're back here. It's a little bit past high noon, but it's cloudy. So at least it's not super hot. Not as bright as it could be. But whatever. So we're back in this spot again. Yeah, that's a motor mount. And uh, we're going to have to uh, undo that motor mount to get to it. Uh, first things first. Safety first. Uh, in this case, I only did it for extra lighting. Uh, but I used the jack under the car. Uh, just to get a little bit more light under there and to get it a little bit closer to me so I don't have to bend over as much because of my back. But also, you want to make sure that you are supporting the engine because this is it, this is it right here. And we want to make sure we support the engine, we're holding it up, propping it up, uh, because we are going to undo this. And uh, there is, you know, a good chance that this will slide down a little bit so we want to minimize that as much as possible uh, so we are supporting the engine as you saw I used a piece of plywood there to uh, kind of you know even out a little bit more of the weight distribution and uh, now we can actually get to it the motor mounts are actually if you look you got this bolt this bolt and this bolt but you also have these nuts here and this one here as well um, those are all gonna have to be removed in order to be able to get this off now um, you could argue that you probably need to remove this part here this bolt here and there's one down here I don't know how well you could see it and just remove them out entirely well as usual we're gonna try doing it the easier way first by just removing the first two parts if we can get around it we will and we will do that uh, so uh, let me not bore you with the details I will bore you with the specs after the fact and then let's go ahead and just knock this out okay so now the three nuts are off and the three bolts are off uh, just in case so that you are perfectly clear these are 15 millimeter bolts what I suggest, you can remove these nuts, that's fine, and remove the two side bolts, leave the one in the middle in. Slowly start going. If you see, and you, you may see a little jiggle in the engine, then the, remember your jack down here? Okay. Give this guy a little couple little pumps up until this is flush once again. As you can see, it's pretty flush. I could literally just go ahead and bolt it in. It's like nothing happened. And that's it. Uh, you just want to support the engine, make sure we don't have any additional damage or anything that we don't cause. So then, just pull the mount right up, move it aside. You want to see what it kind of looks like, big boy. Those are the nuts and bolts. Now this, take a look at it. The rubber on it looks pretty good. It doesn't look any, uh, doesn't look stressed at all. It looks very decent. Okay, so now we take a look. There's your pulley right there. Uh, so, yeah, there, there's a good chance we may have to pull this bolt out and pull that bottom bolt out to remove this entirely just to be able to get access to that stupid bolt. Um, let me see, just for curiosity's sake. Let me grab a socket while I'm at it. Just to see how, how this guy's going to fit. Mm, I don't know guys I don't think so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a try let me uh, put down the camera give it a try and we'll see what the end result is stick around okay guys no doubt about it you have got to remove that primary mount that sits on the engine block uh, or else you're just not gonna be able to turn this this tensioner is super tight um, and I guess that's a positive thing now this is an E type of plug um, I'm able to get in there with a 7 16th. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, pull it, and be able to get the belt off, put it back in. Always pay attention to the way the belt goes. Uh, basically, it rides around on the outside of everything and comes in to the pulley tensioner and then back out around this way. Uh, if you want the part number, that's the AC Delco part number. We're going to go ahead and pull the belt out and get it in. This is a major, major pain in the ass. I don't want you guys thinking this is easy at all. 
if uh, if you don't have the patience you probably want to opt out of doing this this one is a major major pain in the ass just getting that mount out is a pain in the ass just simply because I mean you can see the way it sits um, I've dropped one of the bolts down there I, I don't know if you can see it I'm gonna just grab something else uh, grab another one of the bolts here you can take a look you see how long these things are they're very long now granted this only goes in here uh, as far as the engine block so the rest is really just holding the mount in place um, getting it out was not easy putting it back in is not going to be easy either um, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of finagling uh, believe it or not it helped to jack up the engine just a tiny bit you don't want to go too much because you don't want to damage the engine and the transmission so just enough to be able to get it out uh, and then of course we're gonna have to try to set it in there as best as we can so we can slightly drop the engine or remember you got that guy too so you have uh, two jacking points on this guy not just the engine but the car if you don't want to jack up the engine jack up the car just give it an ever so slight jack a little lift just to be able to get in there because uh, remember this one is up a little tiny bit so this one you don't want to move but you probably want to jack up the other side to get it just enough where you can get these bolts in these are going to be a major major pain in the ass to get back in i can already tell um i looked up the specs that is an e14 so if you have an E14 socket, that's going to make your life much easier. This is a 7 sixteenths. Um, I've never owned an E-socket set. I'm going to invest in one just for the hell of it. I've never really needed it. I've always found a way around it. But what did I say before? 43? Yeah, exactly. You want your life to be as easy and as smooth as possible. And for you younger cats out there, if you learn this earlier, then you save yourself a lot of grief. So we're going to go ahead and pull the belt off, put the new one back in, and uh, then start putting everything back together. Okay guys, this is the new belt. As you can see, it's on. Um, I had to use a flathead just to kind of prop this guy up there. Look, I kind of, you see the poopy right there from it? Um, but this is what it looks like exactly as it did when you took it off. So you just want to inspect it, make sure, you know, by feel um, that everything is, is nice it's on there tight um, now you don't have any slippage uh, you know the belt comes around this way here um, there's the tensioner right there make sure you don't have any real slippage um, you can always kind of play with it here you know if you feel like you got any slippage you can always turn your your torque wrench here your breaker bar and um, that's pretty much it uh, then you know put everything back on the same way you found it um, I'm just gonna double check everything and then we start putting everything back together All right guys, uh, thanks to my neighbor Dougie shout out to you, buddy now We got some light in here other than the cell phone camera um, What you need to do is you need to get the bracket in somewhere around here at this point now if you can see you can turn it the way you want it It's at this point here that you want to be able to turn it Where you can slide the bolts in because remember that these bastards these bastards are huge and it's going to be impossible to get them inside the car once you're once you got this mount in place so you want to get these in there you want to finagle them in there and then make sure you get them in and uh, at that point we'll look up the specs and see how how to uh, torque them if there's any torque um, I would say the bottom one uh, is going to be a little difficult but the top one shouldn't be too bad to torque the spec okay guys so it is back on I couldn't find anything really as far as torque specifications for these for a Buick Encore. The closest I could come to was a Chevy Cruze, which, um, like I've mentioned before, you know, the Chevy Cruze shares the same engine with the Buick Encore, so does the Chevy Trax, the, uh, I believe also the Buick Verano. There might be a few other cars that share the same 1.4 liter um, turbo engine. Uh, the closest I could find was to torque anywhere between 60 to 75 foot-pounds of torque. Um, I went with 60. At 60, we got the click. Um, moved it up to 70. Couldn't get a click. Didn't uh, want to force it. So we know we're past 60 at least. So we're somewhere in between. Or close to in between, I should say. Um, again, this is a small engine. 
uh, you know, so you're not uh, you're not throwing down, you know, 300 foot pounds of torque on these guys. I mean, what are they like? Maybe 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 half of that. Uh, so this is with it back on. As you can see, the belt, nice, clean. We're gonna put everything back together, start it up, and see if the squeaks are gone. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see if uh, problem solved and the squeaks are gone, or maybe we made it worse. So far, squeaks are gone. Let's see the gauges there. Uh, for those of you wondering, yeah, the e-brakes on, and yeah, one of my tire sensors is shot, so don't don't panic about that. But uh, I'm not hearing any squeaks. I knew I forgot something. You see that, guys? Sometimes in the excitement, you screw stuff up. No biggie. That's probably why we had that slightly rough idle there. Very important that you plug your math back in. Okay. So now we go to part two. Whoops. Use my cardboard here. That was a much better start, wasn't it? I still had a little bit of that roughness. Got a check engine light. Uh, go ahead and pull the codes on that and see what, what the deal is with that. And find out it's probably exactly what we're thinking it is. It's from not plugging that uh, MAF in. But as you can tell, No squeaks. So let's go ahead and hit it with the uh, let's hit it with the meter and find out what's going on. Okay, for those of you that are not familiar with a code reader, you usually have to turn the key to the on position, but do not start the car. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do a scan. Let it scan. Okay. So it found four codes. Let's go ahead and read the codes and. 7E8 engine code, 7EB, 7EA. If I'm not mistaken, those are all emissions related. Uh, let's go ahead and clear them anyway. Let me see if we have any. Uh, let's clear them anyway, and uh, we'll go ahead and look them up. So 7EA, and uh, well, you know what? I forgot. This is just what sucks when you get old, man. Um, you forget so let's go ahead and let's read them again until we uh, remember them so it's 7 echo 8 echo bravo echo alpha okay so 7 echo alpha echo bravo echo 8 and uh, we'll go ahead and delete them uh, wait oh, let's read them first I guess wants to read them air intake temperature sensor you know I never even knew that this guy can read the dumb thing um, DTC definitions not found air intake temperature sensor or this might just be the uh, oh, this might just be the definition of them or what it's throwing up but um, this is what we got here these are the, the uh, one out of four codes that it's claiming so we'll look at these let's go ahead and delete them and we'll take a look at them real quick and then we'll go ahead and just go ahead and delete them that's gonna clear the codes we can go ahead and turn off our car for now go ahead unplug the reader and uh, let's use Google real quick okay guys uh, just as I suspected that's exactly what they were they were air intake codes and uh, oh, let's lower the volume there. Those are air intake codes. Let's just see if they come back this time. Uh, let's go ahead and drop the e-brake. We're not going to need it. 
Uh, no rough start this time. Remember, this is because I do have a sensor out. Uh, we'll just give it a minute here. Maybe give it a little bit of fuel. Not too much. Not too much. And remember the last time we checked our levels, so we know that the uh, levels are fine. Now, I don't know if this is true for modern turbos. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but back in the days, and I'm talking about 30 plus years ago, uh, they always used to say that you need to give a turbo 30 seconds to warm up and 30 seconds to cool down. How true that is today, I, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that was true back in the day. But um, if that still holds true to this day, or if that was true at all, somebody please comment and tell me. Um, I'm always in the practice of doing it, just because this is how I grew up learning about turbos, that you know, you, you waited 30 seconds before you went in gear, and then you waited 30 seconds before you shut it off when you were done. Um, but so far so good, not getting any codes. Um, we can go ahead and shut the car off now. Well, it's holding steady, guys. No codes, looking good. I do need to get a little fuel. Uh, but I would say this is a wrap. Uh, and I will uh, I will let uh, Juan Luis Guerra here take us out. Well, this was a jam back in the day. But yeah, uh, somebody messaged me. Let me know if that's true about the turbos. Uh, yesteryear and modern. I'd like to know if that still holds true to this day. Um, I don't see any harm in doing that. Um, other than maybe maybe you lose a little bit more gas. I just can't imagine how much But uh, yeah, no squeaks everything feels good looks good and yeah those codes were nothing more than air intake codes just as I suspected so uh, That's a wrap guys And that's all there is to it that's how you change out a serpentine on a 2013 to, I believe, current Buick Encore. Uh, it may be only up to 2016. Uh, anybody who has a Buick Encore from 2017 forward, let me know. But I believe it's the exact same engine, the exact same setup. Um, so, but it goes across several platforms. So as always, guys, thank you for checking out our channel. Uh, thank you for supporting us. You know the drill, like, subscribe, all that other bullshit. And as always, stay safe out there through this kind of garbage. Uh, here's your boy C again, telling you, as always, stay safe. Be kind one to another. Peace out.